Hi there. Hi, I'm Chris Holmes. I'm a senior programmer for River Run. Um, and I'm happy to be with you here today. Um, we're going to do a quick uh, conversation with the directors of a film called Drought, uh, which we'll be showing on March 26th in our virtual cinema. It's a film we had originally programmed, was meant to be a world premiere with us last year in 2020 uh, and got scuttled. So we're happy to get a redo here uh, this year. Uh, and I have with us uh, Hannah Black and Megan Peterson, who are the co-directors of the film and also to two of the co-stars in the film. So they did a lot of heavy lifting on this one. And it's a homegrown story shot, uh, I think just about all of it within an hour of Wilmington. So uh, we're really thrilled to be able to bring it to you. So welcome, Hannah and Megan. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. We're so excited for this opportunity, truly. Us too, yeah. Um, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was curious maybe just to start out here, if you all could talk about, um, this is a pre-COVID uh, film, so you have to go into the Wayback Machine, but what was it about this story that was, uh, why was this the story that y'all felt compel compelled to tell, like, at this stage in y'all's artistic careers, I guess? Good question. Yeah, that is a good question. Yeah. Originally, it started off, Megan and I are actors first, and we are in the Southeast in Wilmington, North Carolina. So even though we do get some really fun roles to audition for, typically it's like one to three liners, nurse or blonde or waitress, which are fun, but aren't as creatively fulfilling as, you know, you want. And so we thought at first we would create roles for ourselves. Um, and also our friends. Uh, and then drought kind of just involved, evolved into something much bigger than selfishly just us creating parts for ourselves. Um, yeah, Megs, do you wanna take it from here? Sure. <laughs> uh, we had uh, made a short film together and it had a little bit of festival love. We're like, whoa, I think we can do this. Even though Hannah and I haven't been formally you know, trained in film or, or we didn't go to school for film. We just love stories and we especially love uh, Southern stories. And Hannah brought the idea of drought to me. Um, she had worked with children on the autism spectrum and um, really noticed the sibling relationship and how special and important that was. And we realized that wasn't really shown on screen. And so uh, we thought we'd take the opportunity to show um, a glimpse of one person's experience in this family. Yeah, and, and that aspect, the autism aspect has a lot to do with the timing of, of when we're doing this. So uh, we don't want to spoil too much because people are going to be watching this before they actually see the film. But if you could talk a little bit just about the story itself, kind of the broad strokes and then how the autism aspect uh, plays in. Yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of give like a summary of what drought, a log line, if you will. It is um, set in 1993 in a really small southern town that's going through a pretty bad drought, hence the name. Uh, these three siblings live there, uh, Sam, Carl, and Lillian. Carl is the youngest and he is on the autism spectrum. And not a lot is known about autism in 1993, specifically in smaller towns. Um, so a lot of people really don't understand him. He loves weather, loves it so much. And um, so Sam and Lillian and their best friend Lewis decide to trust Carl with this supercell that he's predicting out west. And they go in this ice cream truck and take a trip to try and find it together. And then, of course, it's more about, you know, family and forgiveness and really understanding people who you love. Um, or learning how to understand people who you love. Yeah, and uh, and then I, I mentioned the timing aspect. So we're showing it March 26 as a lead up uh, to April 2nd. Is What's the significance of that date? It's really cool. It's uh, April 2nd is World Autism Awareness Day. And the whole month of April is Autism Awareness Month. Um, also Autism Acceptance Month. Now that a lot of people are aware of um, autism, we're now moving to the next step of acceptance and celebrating our differences and 
Um, it just was really cool timing. Uh, there were at least some drought leading up to, to that day. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, maybe we could talk about, um, I'm curious because I just had learned reading back through y'all's press kit um, that the, the two male co-stars are brothers. And so I was curious if you uh, were kind of collaboratively writing, um, knowing that they were going to be in it, or if, uh, if that came later. I mean, you definitely were playing to your strengths as a small kind of scrappy crew and making the most out of what you had to work with. But just talk a little bit about how you assembled your team, maybe. Oh, yeah. It, well, it's so funny. Um, so, yes, uh, Drew Scheid, who plays Lewis, and Owen Scheid, who plays Carl, uh, they are brothers in real life. We did not write those characters with them in mind because at the time when we were creating this story, we did not know them at all. Um, Megan works at a, a taping studio, an audition studio, and Drew came in for an audition and we were getting ready to cast Drought and she said, Hannah, this guy is Drew. I mean, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> um, Drew is Lewis, um, which we knew would be really hard to find because he's comedic, but he's kind of like a sad clown. He's very specific and um, just his, his essence would be really, really difficult to find. We had to find the right person for him. And so he, he did a table read with us and we were like, yeah, this is him. And then when he read the script during the table read afterwards, he said, my brother um, actually really fits the description of Carl and he's on the autism spectrum and I think and he's a great actor would you like to audition him we're like yes <laughs> um we're like does he look like you then he's like no he looks more like y'all who would you know be his huh. siblings so it it was a miracle honestly so cool and really special since the movie is about siblings and their siblings not playing siblings in the movie yeah, yeah it's real special and we uh didn't we thought it was like too good to be true and so we still auditioned people actually nationwide for the role of Carl especially um because we wanted an autistic actor so that we were casting authentically and um knew that that would be important to the point of view of Carl um, that we cast someone um on the spectrum and so we found a diversity agent who, I mean, we auditioned so many talented uh, young men who fit this very specific description and had so many wonderful choices. Um, and I think that's one thing we're passionate about to let people know that there are really talented actors out there ready to, to take on roles. So. Yeah, well, you see that even in, in the kind of the bit parts and just the, the people doing a scene here or there, or even just all around, it's, it's really strong work. Um, but that's really interesting to know. It sounds like the film was almost insisting it be made and finding a way to get into the world however it needed to. That's cool. Yes, thank you. Yes. And that truck, I mean, the truck is a character, the ice cream truck too. I mean, it's actually not the first Wilmington film I've seen with an ice cream truck in it. So I'm wondering if, I was curious if that truck had been in other movies, but maybe it was just a coincidence. <laughs> I don't know, well, I don't know, Max. Do you know if that particular truck has been in other stuff? I don't know that it has. Um, it was really funny. We, um, you know, we work with Mark and Joe Duplass, who have this theory of for smaller films, you should just use what you have at, in your resources. <laughs> and so he was like, <laughs> "Clearly, you guys have an ice cream truck, so that's why you wrote it." And we were like, "Well, we don't, <laughs> uh -huh. but we're gonna find one." Like we were just determined we would find this ice cream truck and Hannah ended up needing to get gas one day and she pulls into the gas station and there's this beautiful ice cream truck. And so yummy tummy treats uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina, CC's frozen treats is the name of the company that uh, allowed us to use their truck. And it was an adventure. Yeah, <laughs> it was. I it didn't bet. have any AC, just so you know, no AC, <laughs> but it ran, it never broke down. You didn't have any, it, it it broke down <laughs> there were a lot of parallels with issues with the ice cream truck in the movie as well as just while trying to film it with the ice cream truck but she got us through towards the end yeah how were, were you on a process trailer or how, how were you doing those shots to the windshield 
through the windshield was um, poor man's process through in a studio. Um, uh-huh. Sunset Lighting and Grip in Wilmington. They're amazing, amazing. We did one day like that. And then the other two days where the shots are, you know, to the side and even through the back of the truck, we were just driving, 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 driving. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it looked like you you had, had it all planned out well, so. Yay. It was really cool. The guys, uh, Brad Walker, who uh, filmed it from Lighthouse Films, he had the idea of like projecting sky onto the windshield. Mm-hmm. So, um when you see it looks like we're driving, it's just projection of sky. Oh, so wow. Trick of, uh, trick of the eye, but it made it work. I think it sold it for it. definitely did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Oh, in the aspect we haven't talked about, which seemed like it was a game changer for y'all, was the, um, the contest that y'all entered, the crowdfunding campaign that, that resulted in some really exciting uh, advantages for you if you talk a little bit about what happened there yeah we were at a point that uh this was back in 2017 and we were at a point that we were getting older and we needed if we were going to play the characters in the film we needed to make this movie but we didn't know how we were going to get it financed we'd never had to finance a movie before and hannah saw this article about this competition on seed and spark which is a, a fundraising website for artists and she just sent me the article with a bunch of exclamation marks that we should enter this competition. It really was the heart of why we were making the story. It had to deal with um, encouraging filmmakers to make films in their hometown with their local cast and crew to try to start to tell a more even just geographically diverse story uh, landscape. So everything doesn't need to be filmed in LA or New York or even Atlanta. Uh, that we all have the resources around us to make films where we are. And that was our heart because we wanted to film here in North Carolina. And there was the bonus of if you won, uh, Mark and J.D. Kloss would executive produce your movie and give you funds to help make it happen. So we entered the competition. And we won. Yes. (laughs) was wild. But when I say we, really, it was... Our whole, it's a hometown heroes rally and our whole community rallied to, to make it happen. So it was a really special, um, really difficult, but really special experience. So yeah, and then they came on board as our executive producers. Weird, that's, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. I mean, I, and I love everything about that idea. Just, I think the future of, of film, of the film world right now, after this whole one year hiatus is this sustainable communities, regional cinema, I think just people being able to work and make films where they live is just going to be more and more important as we move forward. Um, that's that's kind of where I'm at too as an artist. Um, so I, I really admire uh, y- y'all endeavoring to do that. Um, and how did that, how did that, uh, or did it, did that that opportunity with the Duplass brothers, did that change the approach to making the film at all? Or did that yeah. allow you to do some things or do rewrites to incorporate bigger budget stuff or? Uh, yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> Mar- <laughs> so I think because Megan and I, we had never created a feature script before. Um, really our, our whole strategy was just get it out get it out don't worry about budget as much I mean obviously keep it in your brain um but the script that they read after or when we won the competition would probably be like eight times the budget that we had and Mark we worked primarily with Mark he was like okay guys me and my amazing assistants are going to read over this and we're going to just give you notes mostly on how to um, strip down the script to what the heart of the story is and be able to make it with the budget that you have. Um, he's like, some of these notes you're not going to like, maybe that you can take them or leave them, do whatever you want. Of course, we're going to trust him completely and his team because they know what they're doing. Um, so they sent us notes mostly just ha- to help us make the script for a much lower budget, which was wonderful. And so we did 
two rewrites or a rewrite and then, uh, you know, a, a very refined polish. And um, yeah, and then so that was just so helpful, though, because I think we would have died if we made the original script that we have with the budget that <laughs> we had. So, yeah. <laughs> And you also had to overcome some obstacles with the weather. It, I mean, it wasn't a pandemic, but you did have to take a break, it, I've read. Yeah, it is true. It's true. <laughs> I'm just telling you, if there is any obstacle you can like think up in your mind uh, to run into, we ran into it. So I think that we, um, now we know like, we can do anything, right? Because we really overcome a lot of super tough stuff. One of them was um, Hurricane Florence hit. Mm. Um, So we had an 18-day shoot, and Hurricane Florence was coming right towards Wilmington um, as a Category 4. So we had to make the call on day 12 to pause, which you know for an independent film is just... Uh, Death wish, you know (laughs) what I mean? It's like the worst. Uh, Yeah, because you're already kind of navigating schedules in between projects and so getting everyone rescheduled um coming back when it was 100 degrees out coming back when it's 48 degrees those are some really unique challenges it was cold (laughs) it was so cold we had to pretend to be as hot as we were for the first 12 days which may be the hottest I've ever been in my life so like how do you mimic that (laughs) it's hard (laughs) boy but it happened we did it we did it. Yeah, no, I know. I I was I was wondering about that before I had read your press kit even because I did a feature down in the, the Outer Banks in September, uh, back in like 2013 and 17 day shoot. Somehow we threaded the needle and never really lost any time anywhere, and and the weather was okay. But every yeah, it's always a roll of the dice out there in the late summer. Yes, it is, especially in North Carolina. It has a target that just says "hit me." <laughs> on it for hurricanes so you know yeah. but it was a film about weather so you were sort of tempting I know. sort of tempting fate there we it's almost like because we discussed when we were trying to figure out when to shoot the movie we were like okay we could shoot it in june or july but we just needed more time and so we're like okay we'll do august september and we even said we're like should we worry about a hurricane we're like no it's not gonna happen it's just not gonna happen and it happened but (laughs) you know but our whole team came back together um um to to finish out the movie one our sound guy Josiah he like can't or postponed his honeymoon to come and finish out the film it was just the sweetest we have the best team ever so it was hard but it made it even more special in this weird way and it was cool. We couldn't have filmed in July anyways, which we were originally looking at. Because it that year, it rained three weeks straight in July. Um, and Wilmington became the wettest city in America that year. It's the record year for rainfall. So it's really funny, Chris. The whole, like all of the grass and all of everything was so green and lush and beautiful. So color correction, we learned all about color correcting film. Because clearly, if the town is in a drought, it would not have that beautiful green grass. It was true. so green, it was reflecting on our skin. Like, our skin would have to sometimes be color corrected because it had a green. Wow. Yeah. It was, so, another challenge. You know, whether, yeah, don't plan a movie or, or do and just know. It's all problem solving from start to finish. It really is. Pivot, pivot, pivot. So. Yeah. Um, well, but. The film also just, I'm sure scripted, it was scripted, but that moment that it brings you to at the end, I mean, that's such a like, it left, leaves me breathless that the ending that you land on. And I was just curious if you had any stories about kind of capturing that, that energy of that moment uh, without, without revealing too much, but. Sure, that's, oh, that's so nice. Thank you. But a great moment of sound design, by the way, too. That's the huge, well, the cinematography was beautiful. Brad and our whole team just made it look lovely. And the location that we shot at was actually not the original location for the ending scene. Um, but it, the one that we had prior, it was like the perfect, it was the perfect spot to do it. Um, 
mask. I'm trying to figure out how to say things without revealing anything. Uh, it was a really special, because obviously we shot out of order. It was a really special uh, evening too. Our first AC was getting ready to leave that project and go to another project. We did not know that three days later we'd be pausing and he would come back you know, later for the rest of the film. But um, it was a really hard day that day too. It was really, really hot. We were driving, um, doing a lot of driving scenes in this small town called Garland uh, hmm. the whole day. And so I think when we did this last scene, we were finally able to breathe, which I think was what was needed for that scene. Um, I just think all the, the difficulty of that day, we were finally able to just release and it reflected onto that final scene. Mm. Megan, what do you, and sound design. Yeah, sound department in Maryland, they used to be called Studio Unknown, did a great job with the sound design. It was, it, Hannah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I just remember it being a really tough day but then all of a sudden we had to wait. We had like mm -hmm. 30 minutes that we had to wait. And if you're on indie film sets, you, you, there's not a lot of waiting. <laughs> you just go, go, go. And that, that's 30 minutes we just had to wait before we could film the scene. I think Hannah and I just looked around and looked at each other and thought, oh my goodness, we're actually making this movie. Like this is unbelievable. And so it was really, really special. Yeah. It's great. It's a great day. I'll get, I'm I know I was like oh because you can I can remember it so well <laughs> it might have been the only moment that we had to pause and really just like look at our amazing team you could kind of <laughs> see the the finish line in sight at that point yeah. we thought <laughs> 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 yeah. well I guess um I didn't think we would I didn't intend to go this long this has been great but um maybe if you could um to wrap up, just give us one, is there one thing about the film that's special to you that people wouldn't necessarily know just from watching it that you want to talk about? Well, I think maybe people might get a glimpse when they see the trailer or just read the log line, but really, I think I, and maybe Megan, I think Megan wants people to know this too, but if you have a sibling or if you have that dear friend or family member that you love so much and that you do anything for, but you do not understand, um, I think this movie is for you. I'm hoping that people, when they watch this, will want to call their brother or sister or, you know, the person that means so much to them in their life that maybe um, they haven't spoken to in a while and just tell them that they appreciate them. Um, and just really celebrate who they are, differences and everything, and celebrate other people for who they are, differences and, and everything. Okay. Yeah. That was so good. So I really don't know. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give a fun thing. Yeah. That if people have listened or watched this far, they'll have this little secret. There, um, we realized like after the script was written and um, that there are a lot of parallels between our film and The Wizard of Oz. Hmm. And so we embraced that. And if you watch it, um, you can find little Easter eggs uh, that kind of pay homage to The Wizard of Oz all okay. throughout the film. But not, don't watch it with Dark Side of the Moon playing also. Yeah. No. Like, no. I mean, you can if you want, <laughs> but whatever you want to do is cool, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Good to know. That's interesting. Yes. Well, um, I think this, this has been great. Uh, I, I guess we'll leave it here, but uh, uh, thank you once again, Hannah and Megan, for joining us. And uh, the film is available in our virtual theater. Tickets are on sale now, and it'll go live on March 26. It'll be available for 72 hours for whoever buys a ticket. So I hope you will uh, come join us and, and remember what it's like to uh, participate in a River Run screening again. Um, so thanks, thanks again, um, and I uh, hope to see you at the movies. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much.